In the latest indication of how white-hot AI continues to be on Wall Street, NVIDIA has overtaken Amazon in terms of market capitalization. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. And yes, friends, a crazy new milestone in the AI insurgency. NVIDIA has overtaken Amazon in terms of market value. Basically, during Monday, trading NVIDIA rose just around 3% to reach a new market cap of $1.83 trillion. That puts it ahead of Amazon's $1.8 trillion and just behind Alphabet, which is, of course, Google's $1.85 trillion. The only other two companies that are ahead of NVIDIA now are Microsoft at $3.11 trillion and Apple at $2.9 trillion. You may notice that all of those companies have a fairly significant stake in the AI future. Now, one interesting note is that this is less about Amazon doing anything poorly and more about just the excitement around NVIDIA. A Saxo Bank analyst said, Amazon was actually among the winners in the current earnings season as Amazon's outlook is improving. NVIDIA is just riding the first investment wave of the current AI boom, with massive capital expenditures being deployed in data centers. Now, of course, NVIDIA had a monster 2023 as well, but a lot of its gains came in the first half of the year when ChatGPT hype was at its peak. In the second half of the year, NVIDIA didn't rise as much, but now since the beginning of 2024, NVIDIA is up nearly 50%. Of course, there has been a lot of semiconductor and AI chip stories in the news recently, with the big story of last week being reports that Sam Altman was out trying to raise somewhere between 5 and $7 trillion, in other words, around 8% of global GDP, for a new network of AI chip fabrication plants. Well, earlier today, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, spoke at the World Government Summit in Dubai and said that he wasn't sure that it was going to take $7 trillion to meet the world's compute needs. He said, You can't assume that you will just buy more computers. You have to also assume that the computers are going to become faster and therefore the total amount that you need is not as much. Payments.com goes on. He said he has confidence that the chip industry will lower the cost of AI as its components are made faster and faster and faster. Now that said, it's not like he's saying that Sam Altman is an order of magnitude off here. Huang also said, We're at the beginning of this new era. There's about a trillion dollars worth of installed base of data centers. Over the course of the next four or five years, we'll have two trillion worth of data centers that will be powering software around the world. Now, I think one of the big differences between Altman and Huang here, in addition to the fact that Jensen is running a public company, and so all of his comments are going to be radically more scrutinized by shareholders than Sam Altman's, who has the benefit of going after big outlandish plans because, of course, he is running a private company. But still, there's something revealing in this statement. You have to also assume that the computers are going to become faster, and therefore the total amount you need is not as much. My instinct, although I don't want to put words in his mouth, is that the way that Altman would respond to that is that as the computers become faster, it won't mean that we can get the compute we demand right now for not as much. It will just mean that we demand even more compute. This is basically the way that Altman sees everything that the unleashing of AI and ultimately AGI will create so much demand for everything energy, compute, and all of the things that those produce, that it will require, as he put it at Davos, breakthroughs in energy, that it demands this sort of wild international project to bring online far more fabrication of AI chips. And optimistically, perhaps, it's also why he doesn't see ultimately some big lack of jobs because of AI. His argument has basically been that the more capacity humans have to create and make things, the more things we demand to be created. Ultimately, that creates a whole new set of jobs to do all that creation. Although, of course, as I pointed out in the past, that doesn't necessarily account for what happens during the transition. Now, the other comments from Jensen Huang that made news from that summit were a repeated call, something he said before, that countries have to be investing in their own sovereign AI infrastructure. He basically said that countries that allowed all artificial intelligence to come from outside were going to not only miss out on significant economic potential, but also potentially lose elements of their culture as AI becomes dominant. He said simply, you cannot allow that to be done by other people. It is really up to you to take initiative, activate your industry, build the infrastructure as fast as you can. Now, he also used this appearance to tamp down on fears of AI. He said there are some interests to scare people about this new technology, to mystify this technology, to encourage other people to not do anything about that technology and rely on them to do it. And I think that's a mistake. We're seeing a little bit more of a feisty pushback against some of the AI doomerism out there. Sam Altman made what appeared to not be a particularly veiled reference to Gary Marcus when he tweeted over the weekend, you can grind to help secure our collective future, or you can write substacks about why we are going to fail. Now, if you've listened to this show, obviously you know that both accelerationism and doomerism have a place in the conversation that we're facilitating here. But I too understand the frustration around folks who make it their career to be the poop in the punch bowl. At some point, it gets hard to tell where someone's genuine concerns end and their financial interest in being the loudest critic begins. 
Now, moving over to another very topical story. Yesterday, of course, was the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is the biggest advertising event of the year. Indeed, it's the one time that Americans actually want to be advertised to. This year, as we knew, AI was going to show up in a number of different Super Bowl commercials, and that is exactly what happened. Microsoft Copilot's Watch Me ad, which we profiled last week, played during the fourth quarter, which, for what it's worth as someone who's bought Super Bowl ad time before, means that they didn't make the decision to buy this spot until relatively recently, at least compared to some of the other advertisers. Still, as I said last week, I loved the tone of this particular commercial, reintroducing AI to the world as something not to be scared of, but as something that is fundamentally about empowering people and giving them superpowers. Another AI-related ad that just showed AI being used was for Google's Pixel 8. It showed how someone with visual impairment could use Google's new guided frame AI feature to tell them when and how many faces are in a frame. In addition to telling the story of a particular AI product, it continued Google's trend as being the only company, and I mean the only company, to be able to pull off heartwarming consistently without veering into the realm of cringe. In Etsy's big game ad, the American political establishment used Etsy's AI-powered gift mode feature to figure out what to send France as a thank you for the Statue of Liberty, of course coming up with a cheese board. And then there were a couple ads that were making fun of AI. The sports drink body armor used tropes around AI producing extra fingers and weird images to eventually get to the hook line, nothing in sports should be artificial, before lauding the real sweeteners and real flavors of the body armor drink. There was also a Despicable Me 4 ad that showed the minions as behind famous AI glitches like Too Many Fingers, but doing it for a laugh. Now, Ad Week wrote, Despite having its moment, 2024 is not the year of the AI Super Bowl, and despite everything I just said, that's absolutely true. However, you have to remember that the frame of reference for that is what was widely called the Crypto Bowl a couple of years ago, but whereas there was a ton of attention paid to the crypto ads that year, AI's place in the Super Bowl ads this time was much more cross-cutting. It wasn't just ads for AI features and AI tools, although there were those for things like Copilot, but instead it just showed how AI was starting to make its way into the culture. I think in many ways that reflects how much more significant AI has become in a very short period of time, at least when it comes to regular people's lives, than crypto was even at the peak of its hype. Ultimately, if you are someone who is excited about the future of AI, I think you have to see the Super Bowl as a good showing. Between a shift in the messaging from someone like Microsoft to really try to make it feel empowering to the individual, to just the fun, subtle poking fun of it that came out in a number of other ads, it all had the net effect of normalizing it and making it feel less scary, perhaps, than it did coming into the game. However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.